Hello there. Welcome back to Getting Started with C++ Programming. My name is Richard Snyder, and this is Section 3, Conditional Statement. In this section, we're going to take a look at what is a conditional statement, what is an if-else statement, what are nested if statements, as well as composite conditions, also, what are ternary operators, as well as switch statements. Let's get started and discuss conditional statements. In this video, We'll discuss what exactly is a conditional statement and why is it useful. And the best way to do this usually, in my experience, is with real-world examples. Let's start off with a conditional statement description. Programs, when they execute, they make decisions based off of input and condition. A conditional statement will help a program determine how it wishes to execute. For instance, when your computer program executes, it will follow and execute each line of the program that you write. However, it may be important that at one particular point in time, that based off a variable, input from a user, input from a different data source, that the program execute a different path in order to complete its tasks. This condition will drive which path the program will run. Each condition statement pretty much boils down to true or false. If true, the program will execute the block below the conditional statement which is usually designated and encapsulated in squiggly brackets. If it's false, it'll skip the block and continue with the rest of the program. That's pretty much what a conditional statement does. It evaluates and then decides to execute or not based off true or false with which the condition is met. We make decisions in our life based off input ourselves and they are conditions and we decide to execute them based off the input and what we decide. As a fun example, in the morning, when your alarm goes off, that alarm going off is a condition. The time is to get up. You can decide if you wish to get up or not. If you say, if you wish to get up equals false, you can turn the alarm off, stay in bed. If it equals true, you'll get out of bed. Pretty much as simple as that. Let's use a different real world example. We want to assess grades, pass or fail nothing complex. As we take our courses, we're assigned grades. And based off these grades, we can either pass or fail. If a grade is 70 or above, it's assigned a pass. If a grade is below 70, it's assigned a fail. That's pretty much it. Our condition is to take a look at the grade and determine if it is true or false. And then the program will execute based off that block. As you can see here, this is a diagram of an if statement or a conditional statement. It's trying to determine if it should pass or fail. This line means the program is executing into this triangle, which designates a conditional statement. The condition is the grade being greater than or equal to 70. If that is true, the program will assign a pass. If this is false, it will assign a fail. Everything is driven based off this condition, the grade greater than or equal to 70. Now, before we continue, we should take a look at comparison operators. These are used in the conditions to determine true or false. Now, the first one is equal to. Notice that there is a double equal. The reason for that is, as you remember from the previous section, when we were using variables and we wanted to assign a variable, we would use a single equal sign. The compiler will sit there and recognize a single equal as an assignment, as in, take what this thing is set equal to and assign it to the variable. You don't want to use that. So in order to do a comparison, you have to use a double equal to sign. The next one is not equal to. That is an exclamation point or as programmers say, bang, with an equal to sign. We have less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and then greater than or equal to. Let's take a look at some examples. In the first example, you can see that we're taking a look at one equal to two. This will evaluate to false because this is not a true statement. The next example is, is one not equal to two. This evaluates to true because this is a true statement. The next example is taking a look if one is less than two, which evaluates to true. After that is one greater than two, 
This is not true. That's a false. The next one is 2 greater than or equal to 2. This evaluates the true. Actually, this one is if 2 is less than or equal to 2. This evaluates the true. The reason is, even though 2 is the same as 2, and you're essentially, you're first starting off with less than, since you have that equal to sign, it's saying if it is less than or equal to either one, if either one of those conditions are meant to be true, then the entire condition is true. The next one is stating is one greater than or equal to two. Since neither one of those conditions of one greater than or equal to two, one equal to two is true, it evaluates to false. Again, this should make much more sense with regards to our condition here. As you can see, grade is greater than or equal to 70. We're using the greater than or equal to to determine 70, if 70 is a pass or fail. Because we stated that if the student's grade is 70, if it's equal to that or greater, we want it to be pass. Let's look at a code example. Here we have a program that should evaluate the test score to see if the grade is pass or fail. I'm defaulting the grade string to fail here because I want to set it to fail, just make it very simple, because if for some reason the grade, the test score is greater than or equal to 70, as you can see here, it should change the grade to pass. Now notice, as you can see here, the squiggly brackets. The squiggly brackets are what I was referring to as the block of code. This is the block the conditional statement will execute if this condition is proven true. So as you can see, the test score is set equal to 80. So we're going to do a little execution. When this program runs, it will set the uh, string equal to fail, the test score integer to 80, and it will do a comparison here. If the test score is greater than or equal to 70, change the grade to pass, and then output it. Let's see how this executes. As we can see, we have a pass. Because the grade, even though initialized to fail, the test score is equal to 80, which 80 is greater than or equal to 70, which makes this statement true, which means execute this block of code inside the squiggly bracket. Now, let's take a look. It's a 60, if it's below. This should evaluate to fail or false. Because the test score is 60, which is not greater than or equal to 70, that's a false, which means do not execute this block. That means the grade will not be changed to pass, and the grade should remain as a fail. And as you can see here, the execution has occurred, and the grade has not changed, and it's a fail. And for an example, let's say 70. This should be true because we're taking a look at the equal to sign. Now, if we were to remove this and execute, it would still be fail because it is not greater than 70. As you can see, the execution is still a fail because the condition is not true. It's equal to 70. But our requirement said that the grade is equal to or greater than. So with that equal to sign, and we execute. As you can see, even with a test score of 70, since it's equal to, it's a pass. Now, standard practice is to always encompass the if conditional with squiggly brackets. It really helps with reading. When somebody's reading a program, if you were to just have an if block as such, this would execute because there's only one line after, and the compiler will recognize that this line is based off of this if conditional statement. But for a human being writing and reading code, it's better if you have these squiggly brackets because it's also possible to have multiple actions performed in this block of code. So when you're reading it, you mentally know that with the start of this and the end of this, it's based off of this condition. So it's just common practice is something that I would suggest.